Welcome back to the channel, Rolly Shishu. I've got the incredible Judith who recently interviewed myself and I get the opportunity now to interview Judith and she's been raw vegan for over a year last October. So, you know, not, not someone very new, still, um, still learning, but you've got a lot of experience, a lot to share. And I'd like to know, I'm more curious, you know, your, your past, what led you to this point? So how I structure my interviews generally is I like to look in the past, like right here where you're at now and then where you're going in the future with this lifestyle and, and just anything that can help others where you feel will um, benefit those that are new to this lifestyle or already on and maybe have a few challenges. So Judy, could you share a little bit about you, your, your backstory and what led you to uh, this lifestyle, raw vegan? Yes, thank you so much, Tony. It's lovely to um, to be on your channel. And um, I am Judith. I come from Hungary originally. I was born there and I moved to South Africa when I was 16 in 1995. And at the moment, I'm 44 years old. And um, I've been living in South Africa now for, for 20, 28 years, which is, I consider this my, my home, but I also love Hungary as well. And um, I have uh, a family, a husband and a daughter who's 12 year old, and none of them are even vegans. <laughs> so wow. it's, a, it's, yeah, it's, it's quite challenging at the beginning, um, you know, that they still want to eat their food. And, um, you know, how I view it is I cannot force my beliefs on them. So I, I usually just make, you know, I, I try to get them to taste my food just to introduce them to it if they want to taste it. Or my daughter sometimes have my, has my salad with the dressing. And, uh, you know, from, from my side, that's more of a loving uh, thing to do rather than enforcing your children or your husband to, to not eat what they want. They have to choose it for themselves. That's how I see it. And um, we actually all went vegan once in 2019, all of us. And that went really well. But then um, what happened is I was on and off since then vegan, vegetarian. But my daughter and my husband went back to eating normal, you know, meat and the standard diet. And um, I actually, uh, what happened to me is that when my daughter was born, um, I afterwards, I got very bad eczema on my skin. That's how my whole journey started. You know, I also went to do more of a self-discovery why am I getting this illness, you know, trying to look into the emotional aspect of it, the food as well. And um, it started on my hands because, you know, I had to change a lot of nappies and then you wash your hand all the time. And in my family, from my grandma's side, genetically, we have a bit of a predisposition to eczema. So we having a uh, so my great grandma also had eczema. My grandmother had eczema, and so on. So from the, it's more of um, uh, pre genetic predisposition. I didn't have it for many years. You know, I didn't have a problem, but because of the the uh, birth helped. It's not helped, but made it uh, more possible to you know lower the immune system, and it started to show up. And like I said, I kept washing my hands with things that I shouldn't be washing my hands with. And then um, my body just didn't like it. And they, the doctors gave me some topical steroids. Then obviously the topical steroids, it spread all over my body. And it was just made me so sick, actually. And I just had enough when my daughter was about two years old. I decided, because my eczema was all over my body, it was a horrible feeling. It was like a thousand ants crawling on me, you know, the itchiness. I don't know if you ever had any eczema, but... It's horrible. Anybody that has it knows. People don't understand. It's like psychological as well. It's like affects you psychologically because it's like the whole time you feel this buzzing feeling on you. You know, like it's this, um, like I said, the ants crawling on you when we all that feeling, you know, all the flies and, you know, flies sit on you. I know it sounds a bit <laughs> visual, but I'm trying to explain uh, oh. for the viewers as well. Yeah. Yes, and because of the topical steroids, um, I went into this, my whole skin got addicted to the steroids. It's very bad for you, actually, because now the doctors, what happens is they, they um, 
prescribe steroids, even the, the internal ones and also the topical ones, so quickly. You know, even for a flu, they would prescribe three-day steroids. And it's actually quite dangerous because it can really um, turn your body whole upside down. And um, it really caused me very bad symptoms. And I decided I'm going to just go off of it. I'm not going to use them because I realized it's actually making my skin worse. Then uh, my, my, all, all my hair fell out. My eyebrows fell out. I was like almost dying. I was like swollen up from, you know, going off the medicine. Obviously, I, I didn't immediately go off of it. I just tapered it off. And like they say, but uh, because the topical steroids also affect you very badly, people don't realize, you know, when you stop uh, putting that on your skin. And um, then uh, obviously I started already eating a lot of organic foods. I was researching everything, you know, when you're sick, you're researching everything, what's going on. And that was probably about in 2000, my daughter was born in 2011, but probably 2012, 2013, probably around that 2013. And that was very bad for a couple of months. I actually had to lie in bed. I couldn't get out of bed for three months because I was in so much pain and, you know, my skin was shedding. It was really a horrible experience. And then I started eating very healthy organic vegetables I ordered from myself from a farm close by. And um, I was still eating meat and, you know, all of that. And over the years, it, it continued, obviously, until um, two years ago, when on and off, I could kind of manage my eczema. My body was, wasn't 100% healthy, but I knew I didn't eat wheat. I didn't, you know, <laughs> try not to eat too much um, preservatives, you know, in the foods, because that also affects me. And then every time you get a bit of a rash, you're trying to figure out what is going on? What did I eat, you know? And then uh, what happened is I was, um, you know, my higher self was kept on telling me, um, you know, I must eat more raw, you know, I must eat more raw. And then uh, we went to with a friend to a restaurant that actually had these green juices. <laughs> and I, um, she had a green juice. And I also, I'm like, I want to taste this now. You know, everybody's drinking green, not everybody, but like a lot of people drinking green juice. So I tasted the green juice and it tasted so amazing. I'm like, I'm not going to pay so much for these green juices. I want to keep on drinking it. I'm going to buy a juicer. So I got a cheap juicer, you know, the centrifugal one at, at home. And it came with this juicing book. I lose weight in seven days. Obviously, you know, um, I still had a bit of excess weight. And I was thinking, you know, I've always struggled trying to lose weight. We were trying to run with my husband in the mornings and, you know, do a lot of cardio, trying to, um, you think the cardio will help you, you know, to lose weight. And I'm going to, um, I said to myself, I'm going to start juicing and see, um, you know, if that's going to help me lose weight. And then I bought uh, juice uh, uh, ingredients for the juices for a couple of days, you know, and it's like I ended up buying these huge boxes of fruit and vegetable you know people don't understand you know how people look at you at the shops in a way when you're buying these bulk boxes full of like melons and you know salaries what are you doing you know they think probably that you're catering for 30 people you know um yeah so um and then i i started i, I juice for three days it was actually so tough because in the book it doesn't say that you that you can drink as much juice as you want. They would say, okay, drink like three liters, you know, or two, three liters as much as you, you know, it kind of prescribes juice this one. So I started juicing that I immediately started getting very bad detox symptoms, but I, my intuition and my awareness was like heightened. It was just so amazing. I couldn't believe it. You know, my dreams and everything, even after the three day juice. And then after three days, we had the electricity cut out in in, uh, in our neighborhood. <laughs> and then I had to stop my juicing after three days. But then I realized, you know, there's something to it because I immediately had to go to the bathroom more. Um, you know, my bowels started moving. And after that three-day three day juice, I lost like three kilograms. It was like crazy. So I'm thinking there's something to it, you know. It's, it's, a, it's like there must be something to it. So I really kept on uh, researching it a bit more and I found Fully Raw Christina and Mimi Kirk and Dr. Morse, you know, on the internet, it came into my feed. And I was thinking, you know what? 
And since then, I kept on hearing, I must eat more raw because I started eating a lot of like salads on the evenings, but I would just use a normal salad dressing. It wasn't raw salad dressing. And I'm thinking, okay, well, let's see what fully raw Christina on her app because she has an app that's got certain recipes for free. Let me make, um, you know, some raw recipes. So I started eating like juices until... I would have two juices until lunchtime, then I would have a big salad, but I would still have some cooked food. Obviously, I was already, uh, I, I didn't eat meat now for a, at that stage for a year already. Um, so I wasn't, uh, for me, the meat wasn't a big problem. And then I, um, yes, and, and then what happened is that I started getting even more detoxing then I was thinking, you know, what's going on? Because the juice kept on obviously getting rid of all the toxins in my body. And I'm thinking, I'm eating so healthy and I'm getting all this detoxing, you know? Um, and eventually after a couple of months, I just gave in. I'm like, I had enough now. I'm going to go full raw. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try now to to see really what's this all about. You know, I didn't have anything to lose because I, I still had some rashes that came out sometimes and, um, you know, it is from the detoxing because obviously when you're not fully raw and you start having juices, then your body detoxes, but it's not, you're extending the deto detox in a way, you know. So I um, I went fully raw in October last year. And um, for the first two months, nothing. Can I talk a little bit, Judith? Sorry. Cause, so when you did the juicing, did you just do juice only for how, how long? No, no, no. What, uh, I did that three-day juice. That was yeah. just juice, juice, a green juice and, you know, um, whatever was prescribed in the juices. Um, it's just normal juices like anybody drinks, you know, uh, lettuce, carrots, um, some fruit in it, some ginger, mint and all of the normal ingredients. And then what happened is that when I decided, um, you know, when I ate more raw, then um, I, I just had juices on the morning. Then I had a salad. Then I still had cooked food, almost like high raw, you know. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And then and then now when I went fully raw, I didn't do, you know, you I know that you're an advocate to do the, the juice cleanse, you know, at the beginning. But um, because I just felt like I wasn't strong enough to do the full juice cleanse. <laughs> you well, know, sometimes you have to be right in the Yeah, you do. It there's a time. There is a timing, a divine timing. Yes. And I encourage <laughs> it depending on how you know the the habits of others um it all depends on the client it really does depend and i certainly wasn't ready and that's why it, i was high raw for, for many mm -hmm. years not fully raw. but i did when i did the high like you high high raw and then i did the juice i did do the juice claims i didn't go fully raw f until after but i was very much nearly there to raw Yes, yes, of course. And I agree with you. And now what I'm doing since I went uh, fully raw is that I have a juice in the morning, always a green juice. I always start my day with a green juice because I just miss it when I don't have it. You know, it's like almost like becomes uh, part of your day, you know, like a daily habit because you feel so good. But I'm not, I haven't done any big juice cleanses or days of juicing since then. Um, so when I went fully raw, that was last year, October, I just had green juice on the morning or um, I always mix it with either pineapple or apple you know the green leaves or I would have carrot pineapple and then ginger it depends also what's in season you know if it's a uh, citrus fruit then I would have citrus fruits it's I check what's the cheapest because you also want to look at your budget and um, then the first few months when I went fully raw nothing changed I still had some uh, my skin wasn't that good and I was thinking what's going on I'm gonna just stick it out and after two months it's just started you know healing and my hands healed that was the first thing because that's that was the worst and then my whole body started clearing up and you know the the after six months I've seen a huge improvement after six months I would say it was amazing like even my back pain I had a bit of uh, lower back pain uh, you know, every time I do something in a certain way, it would have a problem, you know. And that went away just like I didn't even realize it went away. And then one day I realized I don't have that anymore, you know. And um, I would say it took me about 10 months to, I would say, to feel like my skin is, you know, uh, 
almost 100% healed, you know, um, it's, it's like I, my skin feels normal, you know, like the feeling of my skin, it's like, it feels like when I was 25, you know, and it took me about 10 months, I would say, you know, and obviously there's some things in my body that's still, I think, healing. It might take longer, like certain things, um, you know, like, for example, my eyesight, like a lot of people, their eyesight gets much better. My eyesight is still the same, for example. But um, there's like my biggest thing is my skin. Like, um, you know, sometimes you don't realize during the day, oh, I feel like, you know, at the beginning when I didn't have any more pain anymore because of my skin, it's almost like you miss it. You're like expecting, waiting for that symptom to come. And it, and I didn't, uh, it didn't happen. And I started doing also yoga again. I could do um, much more, I was much more flexible you know, I'm, I was, I'm much more stronger. Obviously, I lost like 10 kilos in the first couple of months when I went fully raw. No problem. I didn't even exercise the first couple of months because I was feeling sick from the detox. You know, I was having the flu symptoms, tired, and, and your body just gets rid of it, you know, and it regula regulates itself. Incredible. Yes. Wow. What a story. Yeah. And what, <laughs> how inspiring. You know, you hear of it all the time about the healing and, and and the skin is the biggest organ of the body and it's the biggest you know if, 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 luckily I never, i've not really have ever had um skin issues but for for many they do you know if it's itchy rashes or easily sunburn or eczema and can you share like a bit more on because i've got a few clients as well and some friends that really struggle with eczema and they're really mm -hmm. conscious of like it's really affecting their self-esteem and it's to the point where they just cover up all the time they don't mm -hmm. feel good it's affecting relationships i've got a client that's single and she just doesn't feel like when when she's itching up she just doesn't feel she was saying it's not clean mm -hmm. it's really messing with her mental health and and i and i see others really struggle and and when you haven't gone through it yourself like like myself i have my other challenges that i had but for you, did that did that affect mentally for you then? Did you, did you yeah. Go, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Yes, yes, sorry. Um, I just wanted to mention I totally understand your clients because um it, it's very um it, it almost feels like it does feel like you you're not clean, you know, when you feel or you have an oozing skin. And then you feel like everybody's looking at that, but nobody actually seen it, but you make it into this big thing because you think everybody is feeling what you're feeling or what happens with when you've got eczema, you are very uh, irritated because of the skin. So, so you feel irritated like most of the time, you don't always have this calmness about you, especially if you're going through the itchy stage or the oozing stage, you know, it's, it's like, it's very irritated inside because of the pain and moving around and just to shower and that area where it's sore, oozing, you you kind of, um, you're scared to even shower because now the soap's going to touch it. And then it's like almost like, you know, in the kitchen, I had to use gloves for years and years. I always use the glove to even cut just a lemon, just to squeeze a lemon. You cannot get, I mean, have you ever had a sore and then something went on it like lemon? I imagine that you've got a hundred cuts on your hands like that or part of your body and something like that goes on it, how sore that is. And it's definitely, there's a mental um, aspect to it, definitely. And for me, it's that, that like I said, that the thousand ants crawling on you and sometimes one Poor, poor fly would fly on me and I would just lose it because then, you know, it's just that one fly would make you feel even 10 times worse. You know, it sounds crazy, but, um, you know, it's, 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 it's not nice. It's, it's very, it's obviously you got the irritation as well. Like you're sitting yeah. and it's sitting and, and it's sore and it's just uncomfortable. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, and having to have that every day to contend with it's, it's something that sadly many go to the steroids and you even said you, should, you went yes. on to the steroids which makes it worse and, and affects so many other, has so many consequences. So I, I find that when my clients, as soon as they go on the juice cleanse, it heals so fast, it mm -hmm. almost is. And, and that's, 
for me just to get them to see the proof quickly because i know it takes time like you 10 months to but you start to see changes quite quickly yeah. but probably not quick enough at times depending on the severity of it but the juice cleanses i see quite yeah. within the first few weeks and that's what gets them excited so yeah. it's, I, the biggest transformation for many people with the x and so i'm glad you're able to share your story and that you've you're healing it you've healed it and with raw foods and i i hope for those that they commit to it because when you commit to this and and push through like you did and and heal it life transform transforming yes yes exactly yeah when you when you have a serious illness i would consider my illness quite serious because it's um most of the time i didn't have eczema all over my body but i would have like this baths of eczema like we would move into this new place then i would get like full-on eczema all over my body from the dust and the building dust and the you know moving and the stress and everything so it would affect you and it's it's a really serious you don't know when you're gonna get the next um next bout you know next uh, cycle but i i got to the point where you said it wasn't just because it wasn't all the time that you was experiencing what was what else was you experiencing uh what happens is let's say um dust would affect me so we would move into this new place and then i would get a full-on cycle of eczema uh, all over my body you know so it's not just at a certain location it would go all over um oh. so it, it also has what i wanted to explain not everybody has it as badly as i do um but what happened is um when I started going uh, into a full raw um, eating and having the juices and eating a lot of fruit, then um, the more, for example, I realized at the beginning when I was still healing that if I would eat melons and grapes, uh, sorry, not, not melons, uh, grapes and blackberries, it would get like the detox would accelerate. So it would get a bit worse for me. So what I did is that's why it took so long to, to heal because I kind of slowed it down. Then I realized, okay, I'm getting the detox symptoms are just a bit too much. Then I would slow it down by eating a bigger amount of salad or nuts or seeds, you know, in my, in my salad dressing. Then uh, for example, now at the end of the, my journey where before um, 10 months, let's say from six months to 10 months, I would increase my berries and I would increase my, my grapes, for example, um, because I felt that my body was telling me uh, I, was, I must eat more grapes or berries because that's for the lymphatic system. You know, it looks like almost like the lymph nodes. So immediately you connect it. And the healthier you are, the more you can eat those grapes, those kind of fruits, you know, the grapes and the berries and the very high uh, energy fruits, you know. And now, uh, after more than a year, I'm actually eating a lot more fruits than salads. I still have my salads, but I'm craving, like, I can eat as much as I want and it won't affect me because then I know that I'm healed, you know, because then you can almost, like, test yourself with the grapes and the berries if there's any still toxins, like, you know, very high frequency fruit is uh, berries and strawberries and then grapes and, and all those kind of. And what I find now, what's really good for my skin as well, is I eat a lot of watermelons because they're in season. Yeah. Watermelons and everything. Yeah. yeah. I'm glad you've touched on that with the intensity of these fruits. So some that are experiencing heavy detox, if you want to slow it down, when because we sometimes go into that all or nothing thinking and, they still stop it and eat some cooked and it'll take away all the detox uh -uh. and panic to go into that panic. And I get it. I've been there myself. And instead now, if you've got this awareness knowing, okay, I can slow it down. So even like carrots, so I encourage, if anyone's on the juice cleanse, for instance, I, I suggest the carrot juice or not as astringent as these fruits, mm -hmm. like your berries, like your grapes, they're very astringent. And that is a good point. What you said, like if you're struggling, even on the raw, if you're having a lot of fruit and it's the detox is coming in, I have a push through it, you know, experiencing that. Mm -hmm. Or oh, just just take it easier, you know. There has been periods in my journey. I'm glad you brought this up because I, yeah, I witnessed that, but I haven't shared it so much about mm -hmm. that importance of 
yeah, some fruits are very, yeah, very pulling and, and, and can increase the detox. So we, we can slow it down by other ways, like you say, like with the salads or um, if you're doing a juice, do the carrots. Um, bring in even heavier uh, fats or even avocados, you know, if you just want to be yeah. on the fruits. Um, so there are ways that we don't need to go to, you know, the old ways of eating. So I'm glad you figured that out and, and listen to your body. That's what I noticed with you. You you seem to be very, uh, 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 raw veganism does encourage that. But I noticed before, you were saying like before, you, you just felt inclined to eat more raw and that come instinctively. See, that didn't come instinctively for me, I would say. I was so, like, detached. It was until I met other souls. But then you seeked out. I just interviewed Fahad recently, and he was saying he just got downloads to eat fruit and became fruitarian. Didn't even know it even existed, the lifestyle. And he, started <laughs> he was saying he was like, I felt like he was the only one. And then he reaches out on social media. He's like, there's thousands. He was like, oh, I'm not the only one. <laughs> And then it, it's comforting, but he also was like, oh, I thought this was like kind of like a new thing. And <laughs> um, but for you, yeah, you uh, you got that intuition then. So you uh, do you like do any practices to tap into it? Because that's one thing I really um, encourage on this lifestyle to reconnect. And raw foods help us do that. But I was doing meditation before the raw foods. And it really helps me start to be more present with what I'm eating, what foods mm. I'm choosing. How did that come out for you with the intuitive eating? Because mm. that's what I really I teach because mm. it's sight, <laughs> uh, sensing, it's knowing when we're full. You know, that's what we've lost sadly in society is know when we're full and when we're hu actually hungry. You know, we've lost that. Mm. There's so many. Uh, we can't we get we get triggered. It's so and the anticipation for food is constant in this world right now. And how did you reconnect to that? Yes, I actually I was always very intuitive. Um, when I got sick the first time in two thousand twelve or two thousand thirteen, um, I started my journey to looking more into the metaphysical, you know, teachings and. And I just can't get that, God can't get enough of it because it's just resonates with me all the time. So that's really uh, one of my passions, you know, to learn more about how this universe works, how this reality works. <laughs> so I think that uh, my higher self was thinking, you know, this is a good way to bring it in. Um, at the beginning, I didn't hear that I must be. I didn't get that download that I must be fully raw, you know, in two thousand thirteen or fourteen because. I think it wasn't in my reality because there's no one that I knew was fully raw. Even now, I don't have anybody around me who's eating raw. There's no, there's nobody that I know, you know. And um, I think it was more about eating a lot of organic veggies. Maybe my higher self was trying to suggest that. And then I think it eventually, you know, when it became more acceptable in social media, you know, there's a lot of people posting maybe – some might came into my reality more that it is a way of eating. And then now if I think back, according to me, you cannot really, everything is linked. Like the raw eating, the especially fully raw, um, it will link to your uh, automatically into your um, consciousness. It, it's almost like it's on the same level. Like if you eat cooked food, it will bring down your vibration. So um, meditation, I used to meditate all the time. After work, an hour, I would just sit and meditate. I would, uh, that was years ago, um, like I said, you know, during my, uh, since 2013, I would, um, I do yoga. Yoga for me is also very connecting. It's connect my body. So it helps me to ground myself and to connect with my body. And it's almost like sort of a way of meditation for me. So I don't need to now lately meditate for hours and hours. For me, it's very quick. I can really connect much quicker to things. And also taking a walk around the dam that's in our estate where we live. I just connect with nature. I immediately can uh, feel, you know, um, the energy. You know, I raise my frequency. Then I can have better downloads, better connections. But with the raw food, uh, it's just my intuition became 10 times better because uh, what was really, I never experienced that before, but now I can feel people's intentions. So 
<laughs> it can be also scary because when people have negative things about you that they're thinking or feeling, then I also feel that. And I have to realize, you know what, it's just, that's just their way of viewing uh, their reality. You know, it's like a negative belief system. So I mustn't blame them now they're thinking negative things about me. And if I don't, if you don't buy into that, in your own reality, it's not going to be in your reality. So um, if you're just bringing your neutral energy to it, you're not going to bring it into your reality as a negative uh, thing that I see it. That's one pattern I've really yeah. noticed in this lifestyle of the connection, the, the links together. You know, some have come from like the spiritual aspect and then automatically it makes sense to go on the, the lighter foods, the light codes. And some of the opposite, and I've interviewed those as well. I, I would say I came from, I, I got the downloads, but it, it, it's just a natural progression. And, I, and now I, I struggle to connect or take advice from those that aren't raw vegan and teaching spiritual concepts mm. now. I, so I feel there's, there's, there's not that many because I... I'm, I'm compassionate and understanding that's their journey and these other ways I've shared a few videos on this topic but for us to really expand and especially this the shift that's happening now I feel so called to be lighter to move through this journey with much more presence and the only way I can do that with this presence and full consciousness is to really feel everything if we're using food because when we're aware of what food does to ourselves, to our body, to our mental health, it distracts us, it numbs us, it, it sedates us. Mm -hmm. Even cooked food, when we look at the frequency and when we're, we're passionate, you and I, about quantum physics, you know, this reality, I, I, can't, I, I can't expand if I'm eating heavy foods. It was just a calling. These are the strong downloads I'm getting. There was no way I could keep sabotaging what I was doing. I had to, and I had to go with the more of the fruits. It was, yeah, like you, less, less meditation, more just being present. When I'm eating, I'm in meditation. When I'm going for walks, everything's much more present, mindful. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a beautiful way to live. It really encourages that. It, it nurtures and it links. So I've noticed a pattern with everyone that's in the raw lifestyle, they go towards that. The spirituality just heightens, the connection just heightens. Mm -hmm. And we have so much more love and compassion for ourselves and for others. So that's what's really, this year is really, I would say it's been a bigger transformation on the, my own self-love. Like that has really amplified and as that as that for you as well, just within your own mm. choice that you make, you know, like it, for me, I was binge eating when I was comforting. That was my mm. challenge that I I had to work through to escape. For me, mm. thought my thoughts were too much, and the only way I felt at the time was to escape those thoughts by eating. I've really started to listen to what my needs are, my needs are met, and just more self compassion. Mm. Have you ex? Because with the eczema, with that you've you know, you've gone through yeah. the history, the hair, you know, the, 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 not just the pain, but the, the, some of my clients, the shame they have around it as well, or the feeling they, they don't belong. You know, I have a client who's just really in the, the lowest at the point of desperation and wanting to be able to be confident and share her, share her message of what she wants to do with the world. Did you, do you, do you feel like yes. there's a lot of love for you yes yes of course so what happened is that i used to for me uh also foods i used to love uh, especially for me the meat wasn't a big thing so when i became a vegan the first time it was more like um you know it i went through a bit of a detox from the meat which is was really interesting uh because of obviously all the parasites in your body you know to get rid of uh all the rubbish in your colon and then um I love potatoes. Like for me, <laughs> any potato dish, it doesn't have to be chips, okay? <laughs> it can be roast potatoes or like my family can attest to that. So that was for me the big thing. Like that was my comfort food. I will just make like roast potatoes or anything. I'm not such a sweet person. So for me, it's more the savory dishes. And for me, that was a big thing. 
and I would have uh, like a drink every day. Like I would have either a glass of wine, but then the wine was giving me rashes. So I eventually started drinking a little bit of whiskey every day. Okay, that didn't affect me so much, but it did a bit. That was obviously before I went fully raw vegan. And then what happened is that helped me to numb the day. Like you were saying, you would eat um, your, you know, your foods that you like, and then that would numb you and you would feel more accepted into the world. And you, because, and then what happened is when I became fully raw, I gave up alcohol and I don't drink coffee and all the, all the, I can't eat potatoes anymore because I can't eat those white potatoes uncooked. Okay. So, so now everything just came rushing in. So it's not just about the physical detox. I think when you go fully raw, there's an emotional detox as well. And it's almost like I became naked to myself inside. And I didn't like what I've seen. Like it showed me all my negative belief systems about myself. Like, why do I need those things to, because, I, uh, you know, I, I couldn't see myself clearly and beautifully. I could only see myself uh like you said, that shame, you know, or or it shows me something about myself I didn't like, but I couldn't numb it with alcohol or with cooked foods anymore. So you have to deal with it. So everything gets brought to the surface for you to deal with. And this helps you to move forward in your life. So if you look at that negative belief that I was believing about myself, that, you know, like I wasn't having enough self-love towards myself, then I decided, you know what? I have to let go of this because I want to move forward in life. I don't want to be stuck. And I started building up myself and um, I, I actually have a lot more love towards myself. I used to struggle with social anxiety like you did, like I think you mentioned last time we talked. I also had that. I could never speak in a crowd. I would freak out inside. I couldn't breathe. You know, I got, and I decided, you know what, like you mentioned in your last interview, um, you lean in. You lean in now. So because I'm more healthy now, I feel like I'm more confident as well. I want to lean into those challenges, even if I'm afraid. Yeah. And then you want to lean in. And that's what gets you, moves you forward. So actually doing this raw vegan journey is also leaning into it like this because everywhere people are going to judge you that you're eating this food. You know, yeah. if first your family, not judging, you think they're judging, but they're actually not really. Sometimes, sometimes they don't even care, but you view it as judgment, you know, like what are they? But it's your own reflection because everything is a mirror. You know, so I think that my self love towards myself increased like hundredfold, you know, and I feel so much more amazing. And, and raw food actually kick started me, you know, into this journey as well to be more confident. Mm. Do you feel like as well, if I, I have much more love for others because when you're going through so much mm -hmm. hard, hard, you see the suffering, the amount of people that come to me now and share how, how, Sell, you know, sabotaging the art of themselves and they're destructive with these patterns because I talk a lot about these patterns and beliefs that we have that really are the, the, the root cause of all of our suffering that we, we, um, we've just, just not met, we've just not met our needs and we've got a lot of wounds. And the work, the first, the first is the raw food that, like you say, it, take, it takes the bandaid off that we've been masking for mm. such a long time. And it exposes, it brings to the surface. Mm -hmm. Now we're doing the real work. We're going to do the work. And it's not easy. It's shadow work. And that's what I really talk more about with my coaching is the shadow work. But it's it's much more in a way of loving and compassion. There's no, it's come to you for a reason. If you've got, if those that are watching this, there's resonance there. You, there's a reason you're here and you're on this path and on this journey, depending on where you're at. That you, you're on it. You're already on. So it's exciting to actually uncover these unmet needs. So that's where you're going to find that true bliss, and peace and happiness. We don't even have to fix a lot of it. It just it is once you've got the acknowledgement, it just surfaces and leaves. I found that a lot of time, like a lot mm -hmm. of the punishing behaviors. Once I'm aware of it, I'm like, oh, I've been doing that acknowledge it and it just dissipates it's like okay mm -hmm. but i love you anyways it's okay like for me my man was my anger i was get angry at people i realize it's not them it's the behavior but i'm okay i'm allowed to be angry i went into that 
uh, law of attraction positivity. And I know sometimes that can not always serve us because mm -hmm. we're repressing, we're, we're, we're doing the same thing what we're doing with food. But this time I was more conscious of it. I could bring it up and be like, I'm allowed to be angry. I'm allowed to be okay to be angry. Mm -hmm. And then what all of a sudden, once that it was acknowledged, it left. And I was able then, I started to transmute it in much more loving, compassionate ways, mm -hmm. rather than constantly resurfing. If a pattern keeps coming up, there's a reason. And instead of shoving it down with these toxic, numbing, sedating foods, we can listen, we can finally listen to our unmet needs that we've just put under the rug for so many years. And there's a lot for some people to unpack, but it's it's part this is the journey of unpacking it in in the divine timing and enjoying this discovery. Um, I'm going off on that one. <laughs> no, no, I, I totally. I just wanted to add one more thing to it. What you said, it's amazing. I totally agree. It highly resonates with me. And um, what I found, a lot of people don't talk about this as raw vegans, but my body talks to me now. I don't know. I know it sounds weird, but I have to say that it's crazy. Like since it tells me, like um, I remember the one time uh, it was in May, so it was about in my six months journey. I decided, you know what? I'm just gonna have like um, a gin with a uh, something, you know. Like I just decided, I'm just gonna have one drink, you know, just to try. I tell you, my body was so upset. I could physically feel the upsetness of my body, and it sometimes talks to me as well. Like it says something, obviously through my um, uh, higher mind, not in the actual audible word and it was so upset with me for days I was feeling so sick and that was the last time I had any alcohol <laughs> we have to because do these as well it's a reinforcement the, sometimes it's fine tell, yeah you yes. get these down people are like ah we'll, we'll, we'll end the hard way <laughs> yes does your body also talks to you like you can oh, physically you feel it you know when I get sadness now because it comes in and it's been heavy recently so I I, I, used to, I used to associate it with the back with my old because sometimes you you've got these residues still in the body that's coming up and it's it's mm. away and, and now I'm realizing no you, you, you you're telling me something something's off something you are you are sharing your truth and I sit with it this time I sit with it and not go and get food not go and eat not even even eating the fruit I just sit with it um, so I'm very conscious now and my body is telling me all the time like yeah I hands down I couldn't I couldn't even put poison in my body anymore like the alcohol is like no girl that I will <laughs> you know what? the more you're on this path how much not, not just the mental aspects to it the, the guilt that you feel but it's the physical like it's I I get sick you know, even some cooked food that I have, like mine was potatoes as well. I loved potatoes. <laughs> I was raw until dinner, and that was my go-to potatoes, everything. And that was a, a, a there was a lot of sadness to giving that up because that was my my identity. So I I worked a lot on the shifting of beliefs and mindset. You know, the identity work. That's been a big transformation for me. And with the, with the raw food, because it's it's giving you the the clarity the answers it's so much easier like you mm -hmm. say you're listening to your body your body is talking to you it's interesting yeah not many do talk about that they say it in other ways but like the higher self but your body physically is saying like it, it has this aversion and and so mm -hmm. it's, it's in tune with it more it's like i know when i need to not go somewhere now i'm going to just hold hold yeah. off a little maybe because there, there could be an accent or maybe it, 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 there's a reason so I'm really tapping into more of everything's happening for me not to me and I really embody that now before I was like resisting why you know why are you doing it to me why have I got these, these <laughs> sabotaging patterns now it's it's with love now it's with like I'm listening I'm listening okay you've got the answers it's more than just here like I said we've got these we get these channeling like it opens up the raw foods opens up the channels and everything's clear and it's much easier like i say we don't have to do the the length we can if you want the longer lengths of meditation but we're always in meditation when you're on this lifestyle because we're not numbing anymore we're not we're mm. not the foods 
So you're at now, the place you're at is, what, what's your diet? What, what are you eating day to day on average? What's that look like? Uh, like this morning, I had a, a juice. Um, I would, I also like carrots, apples and ginger. And I had that this morning because carrots, for some reason, it's so good for my skin. For all your clients that are doing, that I have eczema, they must actually try it because that's really, um, I don't know why it does that. I think there's something in the carrots as well. But I just do it because it's very cheap. Yeah, carrots are very cheap. So I can buy like a huge packet of carrots and I can choose that like a couple of times, you know. And um, then I would make like a liter juice if I can. I, I Even if I can just make half a liter juice and I don't have enough ingredients, I still make a juice. Like with celery, uh, apples and uh, ginger. I like to put ginger in practically all my juices because ginger is also something that really works for me. I love it. Uh, quite a big piece, you know, I, I work myself up to quite a big piece now. I think other people, normal people can't drink so much ginger. <laughs> and, I, I don't um, that tolerance of because then it's got, yeah, I, I love it. I love it. <laughs> yes. Now. And then uh, what I would do is I had a big bowl of watermelon afterwards. And then, um, when I woke up, I was quite hungry. So I'm not so, I tried to go with the flow. I'm not very strict with myself. So I had a banana when I woke up because I was quite hungry. I wanted to just walk around there with them. And then um, then I had the juice. But usually I wouldn't have anything before the juice except water, like, you know, filtered water. I, I try not to drink tap water at all because it, the chlorine, I can't take the chlorine since I'm a raw vegan. I like get so put off even I smell it from a bath like half a meter away in the glass. It's just really bad because that's another thing. My my smell became like tenfold. Like I can smell gas from like or or anything. Like other people can't smell it. I'm like, can't you guys smell it? Smell this, you know, something going on or <laughs> everything's heightened, isn't it? All your senses. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. Just the smells and it's super strong. Like even like oils, cooked oils or burning yeah. animals. Like for me, it yeah. would be me. And that's another thing I'm in tune with. Like it's like it, it brings, that's where my sadness. So oh, that's another, bringing it back to the sadness. When mm -hmm. sadness floods me, I'm not, it's not the pain from me. It's not my feelings of, because I, I used to question, is it my self-worth or no, I'm feeling the energy. I really yeah. Know, more empathic and we feel yeah. it and I and, and I've been feeling feeling it a lot recently but I've just realized there's not just around the corner there's a pig farm and I'm sensing yeah. that we sense we're, we're very but, sensitive maybe um, maybe you sense that sense the collective energy of those pigs that are on the pig farm and mistreated Sometimes you do get those um, that like you have that connection to certain things like I can easily connect to nature. I don't know, for me, like even connecting to trees or, or animals, um, you know, I, I connect easily. So I think that's easiest uh, to connect. And um, the the one thing that I just want to mention uh, before I tell you what I, um, what I eat in a day is that the social aspect of it for me, that's hugely changed because I had to shift in my mind. Because previously, every time you meet with your friends or family, it's all about food. You know, we have a barbecue or we do this. And then I would just like sit there. I'm like, I'm the one I felt out. I felt like they didn't mind that I'm eating my own thing. But I felt like, you know, you all used to connect with food always. And now uh, in my raw vegan journey, I learned how to connect with people on a different level. So I actually make an effort now to connect about their life, talk to them properly, and not just talking about nonsense or, um, you yeah, um, or, or it's not about the food connection. So you have to learn it. It's almost like a new skill you have to learn to, to be able to, yes. Yeah. Gossiping, no drama. Yeah. I, I, I can't anymore. stand it. Yeah. 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 Yes. And I just quickly wanted to mention, so what I had yesterday, for example, um, for lunch, I had a big salad, so I would make a salad. Um, I don't make a huge salad because even after uh, more than a year, I still struggle to eat these very big salads. I would still make a big salad, but not the, not what no, you know, uh, fully raw. No. Christina eats <laughs> those huge salads, and I'm yeah. like, I, there's no way I could eat that in one go. So what I do is I eat more times. I don't restrict myself about that. So when I'm hungry, I eat. So I would have like a 
medium sized salad and then eat as much as I can, then I'm full, then I stop. That would, because it's got uh, avo, I would put avocado in it and maybe a nutty dressing. Uh, that would last me a couple of hours, but then I start getting a bit hungry, then I would have more fruit. Um, and maybe an ice cream, you know, make that frozen, um, uh, you know, banana mixed with some frozen pineapple or blueberries or, you know, with a bit of lemon juice. And I would blend that, have that. Um, I like that as my treat of the day. I always have an ice cream. <laughs> yeah. So I have to have that is because, you know, you have to also give yourself a treat. You know, that's always when my family is eating ice cream, then I take out my ice cream, then I would eat that. You know, I would always have something like because my family would eat something else like a treat, then I would make my like when they have sweets i would take out some dates to eat you know so i find a way to to also yes. treat myself and not feel like i'm not getting any treats then i would uh, i would still make um i always make an extra small salad and put it in the fridge and on the evening sometimes i still crave a bit of salad so i would still eat a little bit of salad you know because sometimes when i eat um fruit i can't eat enough fruit like i can't consume sometimes eight mangoes and i feel like after two hours i'm hungry like i would have maybe three mangoes that i could consume at once and then i would have a little bit of salad and then um you know but i still eat a lot of fruit like my main calorie still comes from fruit it's just because the greens ground me as well a bit and also it, it makes me full uh for longer you know that's why i still um I love the greens, yeah. I still mm -hmm. I the juices. The lemon ginger blast is a daily, generally a, a daily occurrence for me, and I enjoy. Yeah. So you're so moving forward. Then you you feel this is your lifestyle. You feel this is the way you will continue at this as at this moment in time where you're at. You will continue. Yes. Yes. Yes, yes, of course. I, I know that some people only do this um, lifestyle just to cleanse and they don't have serious health problems and like some of your clients. But for me, this is a lifestyle I want to stick to because I feel so good and I don't want this illness back again. So I know that this um, I'm healed and I feel amazing inside. My mind is sharp. Um, I, I just have a totally different understanding of life. I see it and my energy is so much more higher. And why would I compromise that by going back to eating um, cooked food? You know, I I would, I mean, eating meat, I wouldn't think, I don't think I would ever meet, uh, eat meat again because that's just something, uh, I just, it puts me off. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I don't know what's going on with internet. I just stopped sharing my video. Are you back? Okay. Yeah, you're back. You're back. Yeah. Sorry, I'll switch on my there camera. Sorry about that. I don't know what's going on. Sometimes I think the internet is a little bit unstable. We do have fiber, but um, yeah. sometimes I think people are working from home, you know, after COVID. I think there's too many people on the fiber lines. Yeah. Yeah. No, we only missed a little bit. So, yeah. Yes. Yeah, continue. It's okay now. Uh, what was I talking about? Oh, the, the lifestyle. Um, I would, uh, the one thing I, I don't think I would ever eat meat again. That would just totally put me off. I just can't stand the smell of meat. I have to still make it for my family every day, but I don't taste it. I always get my daughter to taste it or I more or less know what spices to put in. Uh, I do it because, you know, I still have my own, um, things that I have to do for the family. So uh, I still have to do it. But, um, I don't think I would ever eat meat again, you know, but also the, the cooked food. I feel so good. Why would I compromise that? You know, um, I think what happened to me when I, when I started feeling really good, I once or twice I had cooked food like chips or, or, uh, I had, uh, you know, the vegetarian sushi with the rice. Oh mm -hmm. my word. I felt so bad afterwards. I felt so sick from the chips. I was sick. Yeah. And then the, the sushi, I yeah. immediately, as soon as I ate it, I felt like my energy dropped from here to there. And I'm glad I tested these things. You know, I, I didn't, I, I don't eat. I mean, I tested these things like I can count on one hand, you know, how many times I ate some things here and there. But I mean, why would I compromise feeling so good and feeling amazing? And another thing is um, I, my genes are quite good. I don't have a lot of wrinkles, but since I'm, 
I'm high row. Okay, I'm not high row. Fully row. I practically all those wrinkles are also gone that I had. Or you know, um, I still got a little bit of gray hair because I can't dye my hair now because I don't want to put that chemical on myself. But um, I'm still waiting. I'm hoping that my gray hair will also go away a little bit. You know, I got a couple of gray hairs. But um, I'm you hoping that it. we're also going to hear people, yeah, with the hair. Yeah. So I'm, I'm really, I cannot imagine going back to that lifestyle where that food makes me feel like, you know, after that Sunday lunch, how you just want to sleep for three hours. That was one of the things that happened to me. Yeah. <laughs> oh. oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Well, in, okay. in closing then, Judith, um, yeah. can you share any tips? Um, that will help. That's really helped you, and will help others on, on this journey going, you know, towards raw foods. Um, yes, I think the number one thing is that first you have to go vegan. Like if you've been eating meat, just go vegan immediately, because I don't know. Um, I believe in more the gradual process. It depends on someone that. Um, um, you know, that, that wants to immediately dive in. Some people are like that. They would like to immediately just cut everything off. I would just say, first go vegan. Just cut out all the animal products and meat. You know, you can still eat um, some other vegan food, cooked food. But just start by going vegan totally because that is also a mindset shift. You have to actually get used to the idea that... Um, Almost like you're going to judge yourself when you go out in the restaurant and you're going to order vegan food. So it's more of a psychological shift as well for me. I think it's not just your body can't handle it. So I think it's definitely the first step is just to go vegan immediately, you know. And then that will also put you in a bit of a detox, you know. And then once you've been vegan a couple of months, then go then go like uh, maybe high row or fully row, you know. And I think that it also depends on how badly you want it. Do you really want it or not to be healthy, your life to change? If you if you have the why, if you have that why, you will change and you will do it. You can do anything as a person. You just have to have that determination. I think people that are always have excuses, then they don't really want to do it or they have too many negative belief systems stopping them, you know? But we, you can do it. Yeah, we can change it. With Anything is possible. Yeah looking at others that have overcome like uh, that i know there's a lot of people that's in the colder climates that are saying it's so hard you know that was my belief it's so hard i actually moved <laughs> i moved that was my way hey, you see. <laughs> so there is there is these ways but also i'm we're seeing others that are making it work if they if you want it but yeah not not everything's connected straight away but if you're on this path i believe the more you're on it the more you're more in tune and have this mindfulness in your daily uh, practice, then it's it's inevitable. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, thank you so much, Judith. I really appreciate you coming on today and sharing. Are you there? Are you gone? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you yeah, yeah I'm, yeah, I'm just listening to you. No, I'm listening. No, thank you oh, so you much. Can't. I I really appreciate. Um, I really appreciate. I think the internet is telling us. Come on, we've is it? <laughs> uh, we had it. It's paused on your beautiful face, though. So. Yeah, yeah, you're back. Could be mine. It could be mine. But that's, I think it's the universe is telling us, let's close it. So thank you so much, Judith, for coming on. I really appreciate it. You're so beautiful. And I love that these connections, these conversations we have. Oh, it fills my soul. It's soul food, you know, like the raw foods, these connections, these, these depth, these talks that, that we have, that we share is just, oh, it fills me up so much. It really amplifies my day so thank you it's a pleasure thank you so much for having me it was amazing to talk to you and i love also this conversation that's like my passion <laughs> as well Same. we always end with the be feel and stay rollicious you're going to say it with me together after three <laughs> stay rollicious roll, roll they say be feel stay rollicious we'll we'll do it together so after okay. three ones Yes. Be, be free. Feel, stay, feel, stay, roll, listen. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.